Welcome to our lecture online and now we're starting a brand new chapter in astronomy, chapter 7, and it's about the solar system, but we're talking about the solar system in a unique way. We're going to do it in what we call comparative planetology. We're going to compare the different planets in all kinds of different ways to get a feel for our solar system. Now, of course, the basic shape or the basic structure of our solar system is at the very center we have the sun. The sun contains way more than 99% of all the mass of the whole solar system, so almost all the mass is right here, but then we have some very interesting things in the rest of the solar system, especially, of course, the third planet where we live, but we have, of course, the four terrestrial planets, then we have the asteroid belt, then we have the four gas planets, also known as the Jovian planets, and then we have what we call the copper belt beyond that. Now, we used to have Pluto as one of the nine planets, but Pluto is no longer considered a planet, now we find that there's a whole bunch of objects like Pluto out there, so we call them trans-Neptunian objects. Objects that are beyond the orbit of, uh, of Neptune. Of course, we realize that Pluto, for a very short period of time, every 248 years, comes within the orbit of Neptune. But by and large, the trans-Neptunian objects are farther away, on average, than Neptune. And so there's a bunch of those, so we call them trans-Neptunian objects. They're also the dwarf planets. Of course, there's a whole bunch of comets out there as well. The copper belt is kind of like a donut-shaped ring around the inner solar system that includes the planets and the asteroid belt, and it's in the same plane called the ecliptic, the plane that's made up pretty well from the, from the orbits of the planets. The orbit of the Earth, of course, makes the exact location of the ecliptic, and then the other planets are pretty close to that particular uh, region. And then beyond that, we have something called the Oort Cloud. Now, the Oort Cloud is a region way out there, much farther away than the Copper Belt and all of the planets. It's far, far out there into the hundreds and thousands of astronomical units away. Remember, an astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So we're talking about way out there in the far reaches of the solar system is a kind of like a spherical-shaped region that encompasses the entire solar system. So not just the ecliptic where the planets and the asteroid belts are and the moons and everything else, but we also have a spherical shaped region that goes out for as much as a whole light year away from the sun that's filled with billions and billions of remnants of the formation of the solar system, primarily ices and, and frozen gases way out there in the, in the shape of small rocks and big rocks and maybe large enough to be comets that then sometimes come streaking in, or streaking in, I should say, proper word, streaking into the inner solar system. But we'll talk all about that a lot more. We just want to get a feel for that we have a solar system of structures by the sun, the terrestrial planets, then we have an asteroid belt, the gas planets, a copper belt, a donut-shaped ring around the planets, and then far beyond that, completely encompassing in all directions in a spherical shape, a nortula that's filled with the remnants of the formation of the solar system, basically some rock and primarily ices and frozen gases way out there. Now what we mean by comparative planetology is we're going to compare first of all the terrestrial planets to the gas planets and then we're going to compare all the planets in terms of size, distance from the sun, density, rotational speed and so forth. And we'll look at all those various aspects so we get a, a good picture of what our solar system is about in comparison to one another. And then, of course, we're going to go into more detail about talking about each of the planets, the asteroids, their moons, and so forth. But we're going to start out more in general terms, comparing all the planets in various aspects to get a feel of what our solar system is like. So, we'll start with this. This is the introduction, and there's many more videos to come in this chapter. So, stay tuned. System, but in a particular way, we call this planetary... Mm, okay, let me start over again. Comparative planetology, okay. okay. Got this, I got chapter this. in astronomy called astronomy, no, no, no not called astronomy. <laughs> oh man, okay, I got a shift here, got a shift. In the solar system, no, that's not what I wanted to say. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, one more time, last time, good time, here we go. 